Have you ever wondered where white people actually came from? Was there a specific place or moment in time? And why is their skin lighter than others? What caused that change? Well, today, we're diving deep into history, genetics, and anthropology to uncover the fascinating truth about the origin of white people. And trust me, this isn't just some random history lesson. This is about us, about humanity, and how we all started in the same place but ended up looking so different. In this video, we're going to break it down into three key parts. The science behind skin color evolution. Because, believe it or not, it's not just about genetics, but also about survival. How early humans migrated and adapted to different environments, shaping the way they looked over thousands of years. And finally, how white populations emerged and became what we recognize today. Sounds interesting, right? Alright, let's get into it. Have you ever wondered why people have different skin colors? It all comes down to one key ingredient, melanin. Melanin is the pigment in our skin that determines how light or dark we are. The more melanin you have, the darker your skin. The less you have, the lighter your skin. Simple, right? But here's where it gets interesting. Melanin isn't just about looks, it's actually a built-in survival tool. Melanin's main job is to protect our skin from the sun's harmful ultraviolet UV rays. The more sun exposure you get, the more melanin your body produces to shield your cells from damage. That's why people from hotter, sunnier places, like Africa or South Asia, naturally have darker skin. Their melanin acts like built-in sunscreen, reducing the risk of sunburn and even skin cancer. But what happens when humans move to places with less sunlight? This is where skin color begins to evolve. Thousands of years ago, when humans migrated to colder regions like Europe and parts of Asia, they were getting far less sun exposure. And while melanin is great for protection, it also blocks vitamin D production, which is a problem. Vitamin D is essential for strong bones, immune function, and overall health, and we get most of it from sunlight. So in places where the sun wasn't as strong, people with lighter skin had an advantage. Their bodies could absorb more sunlight and produce more vitamin D. Over generations, the genes for lighter skin became more common in these populations. So skin color isn't just a random trait. It's a direct adaptation to the environment. Darker skin evolved for protection in high sunlight areas, while lighter skin developed in regions where vitamin D was harder to get. Pretty cool, right? Now that we understand the science behind skin color, let's dive into how early humans migrated and adapted to different environments over time. Now that we understand how skin color evolved, let's talk about how humans spread across the world and why that mattered for their appearance. Around 200,000 years ago, the first modern humans, Homo sapiens, emerged in Africa. This is where all of humanity started. For tens of thousands of years, our ancestors thrived in the warm, sunny environment of Africa, where darker skin was essential for protection against intense UV rays. But around 60,000 years ago, something changed. Small groups of early humans began migrating out of Africa, possibly in search of food, better climates, or just pure exploration. These early humans followed coastlines, crossed into the Middle East, and eventually spread into Asia, Europe, and beyond. As they moved further north into Europe and Central Asia, they encountered a completely different environment. Colder temperatures, less direct sunlight, and long, harsh winters. Unlike Africa, these regions had fewer hours of strong sunlight, which made vitamin D harder to obtain. Since dark skin naturally blocks UV rays, people with lighter skin had an advantage in these areas because they could produce vitamin D more efficiently. Over thousands of years, genetic mutations favoring lighter skin became more common in these populations. So as humans spread across the world, their bodies adapted to their new environments, leading to the diversity in skin tones we see today. But how exactly did white populations emerge? Now that we know how early humans migrated to colder, less sunny regions, let's talk about what actually caused their skin to lighten over time. This wasn't an overnight change, it was a slow genetic process that happened over thousands of years. Scientists have identified a few key genetic mutations that played a major role in skin lightening. The most important ones are SLC24A5 and SLC45A2. These genes influence melanin production. Mutations in these genes led to less melanin, which resulted in lighter skin. 
So how did these mutations become common in European populations? It all comes down to natural selection. In northern climates where sunlight was weaker, people with darker skin had a harder time producing enough vitamin D. This led to health problems like weak bones and rickets. But those with naturally lighter skin could absorb more sunlight and produce vitamin D more efficiently. Over generations, these genetic mutations spread because they gave a survival advantage. Another factor that sped up this process was diet. In Africa, people got plenty of vitamin D from the sun. But in colder regions, where people relied on food sources like grains, they weren't getting as much vitamin D from their diet. This made lighter skin even more beneficial, reinforcing the genetic shift. Over thousands of years, these mutations became dominant in European populations, leading to the skin tones we see today. But genetics wasn't the only factor. Culture, environment, and migration also played a role in shaping white populations. Believe it or not, the first Europeans were not white. When early hunter-gatherers arrived in Europe over 40,000 years ago, they still had dark skin, similar to their African ancestors. This is something scientists confirmed by analyzing the DNA of ancient skeletons. So when did lighter skin actually become common? The change really started around 10,000 years ago during the transition from hunter-gatherers to farming societies. Farming spread from the Middle East into Europe, bringing new ways of living and new genetic changes. Farmers ate more grains and fewer vitamin D-rich foods like fish and wild game. This made lighter skin even more necessary for absorbing vitamin D, helping those with genetic mutations for paler skin to survive and pass on their genes. Over time, this shift in diet contributed to the spread of lighter skin tones. But there's another major piece of the puzzle, the Indo-European migrations. Around 5,000 years ago, a group of nomadic herders from the Russian steppe, known as the Yamnaya, migrated into Europe. These people carried genetic traits for lighter skin, blue eyes, and even lactose tolerance. They mixed with the local farming populations, accelerating the spread of the genes responsible for modern European features. By the time of ancient civilizations like Greece and Rome, light skin had become the dominant trait in Europe, but it wasn't a strict racial category yet. That idea would develop much later. Now that we've covered the genetic and historical development of lighter skin, Let's talk about something just as important, how whiteness became a social identity. Because for most of history, skin color wasn't a strict racial category the way we think of it today. For thousands of years, people identified by their tribes, nations, or religions, not by being white or black. But as European powers expanded through colonialism, things started to change. During the 17th and 18th centuries, European elites began developing racial classifications, ranking different groups based on skin color. This was largely to justify slavery and colonization. By defining Africans and indigenous peoples as inferior, Europeans could rationalize their exploitation. During this time, whiteness became more than just a skin color, it became a social status. Scientists of the era promoted scientific racism, a now debunked field that claimed some races were biologically superior to others. These ideas fueled systems like segregation, apartheid, and racial hierarchies, shaping societies for centuries. But even within Europe, whiteness wasn't always fixed. In 19th and early 20th century America, groups like Irish, Italians, and Eastern Europeans were seen as racially different from Anglo-Saxons. They were often discriminated against and excluded from the white category. Over time, as they assimilated into mainstream society, their status changed, proving that race is not just about genetics, it's a shifting social construct. Today, whiteness continues to evolve as societies become more diverse. But its history shows that race has always been more about power and identity than biology alone. So, what does all of this mean in today's world? Skin color is simply one of many amazing ways humans have adapted to their environment. From the deep history of early migrations to the way society shaped racial identities, we see that whiteness, like all racial categories, isn't a fixed thing. It has changed over time and will continue to do so. But at the end of the day, we're all part of the same human family. The differences in our appearances are the result of climate, genetics, and history, but they don't define our worth or who we are. 
Science has shown us that race is more of a social construct than a biological reality, and understanding this can help break down barriers and challenge outdated ideas. Now I want to hear from you. What surprised you the most about this topic? Was it the fact that early Europeans had darker skin? Or how the idea of whiteness has changed over time? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into history and science, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you never miss another fascinating discussion. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.